simulated universe would indicate that there is code underpinning the universe and wired into the simulation. How would you find, um, locate, identify that code? Is that the next frontier? And when I say glitches, I'm not talking about UFOs or uh, ghost apparitions or this kind of stuff, paranormal uh, things. I'm talking about violations of the laws of physics in a short time segment, in a uh, little uh, localized space-time uh, region, um, things that don't make sense and they contradict everything we know. Um, mm -hmm. So that that would be some kind of indication of the glitch in the, in the in the simulation. The problem I have with this approach is that the, the laws of physics are continue uh, continuously evolving. We we are developing uh, our understanding of the universe uh, on a continuous basis, and uh, you can you, you can. Just look at the uh, classical mechanics, if you want, the, the Newtonian dynamics. Uh, we, we, we Not long ago, we thought is all there is. It explains everything, is uh, the dynamics of uh, large objects, small objects, whatever. Is, um, it's a beautiful theory. Uh, but then we had in 1905 special relativity, and we understood that the dynamics of uh, things moving at relativistic speeds um, is very different to the Newtonian dynamics. So it's called relativistic uh, mechanics, okay, not classical mm. mechanics. And then, uh, not 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 long after that, we developed uh, an extension of this called quantum mechanics, to explain the the, the dynamics of uh, things at quantum level, like the atomistic level and subatomistic level. Uh, so we, in other words, if you would observe before we develop these new theories, if you would observe something that appeared to be a glitch in the simulation, it was just our lack of understanding or our, uh, uh, you know, very immature, if you want, uh, the understanding of, of the laws of physics, which are continuously evolving. Um, so this approach is maybe not the best from the scientific approach because... The glitch may not, in fact, be a glitch. It, it may be... A, it, it might be something that we don't... Exactly. Side. That's mm. exactly how to put it. And uh, besides, we don't have a reference frame to distinguish what is real and what is not real. So um, it's not... Um, um, it's not a good approach. But the other two, looking for what you just said in your question, looking for the code mm. or looking for the data of the code, okay? These are very viable uh, uh, propositions. And the, the, uh, I've seen some interesting ideas. For example, looking for the code is maybe if you overload the computational power of the universe in a local um, uh, space-time volume, uh, you... you give, um, it's almost like a DDoS attack uh, on the universe itself. Uh, the, the idea is that if you can engineer something like this, um, the time will slow down, just like in the relativistic uh, mechanics, it will slow down in that region of space-time because um, uh, this is exactly what a computer does if you if you overload your computer with too many... Uh, applications being opened at the same time and the processor and the memory is being overloaded and is um, it's not capable of handling all the applications and the computational processes mm. what it does is slows down everything starts moving slowly and it it, it, it the, uh, the computation is being delayed and so that would be the equivalent uh, of a ddos attack on the university you, you would you should see some kind of time um, slowing down or some kind of gravitational uh, anomalies uh, in that uh, in that region, and this is what uh, this is what time does around black holes. Uh, the black hole horizon it stops completely. There is no time flowing, and uh, at relativistic speeds, uh, it, it is exactly what it does. It, the time uh, flows slower for objects moving at um, relativistic speeds and stops completely at the speed of light. And that is a uh, these are little hints that we have in science that just like a computer and like a computational process that has a limited processing power, a processor running at, I don't know, five gigahertz or whatever, it's yeah. that's the processing speed of the processor. You mm. cannot overcome that. We also mm. have a, a limited processing speed is the speed of light. How so would you, we, how would you test that? How would you, how, like, how would you um, run the experiment? That's the million dollar question and the, the Nobel Prize uh, <laughs> winning uh, research. I mm. mean, <laughs> if I knew how to do that, I would I would do it tomorrow, but um, I don't have a clue. And I've been exchanging emails with some very smart guys and um, um, 
there are suggestions, you know, there are hints of how one might go about this, mm. you know, but um, it's totally unachievable as, as 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 far as I know, we don't have a protocol yet. Um, so that that is an approach, okay. But um, mm. another approach is to actually look for some signatures of the code in in the universe, okay. And I think this is what I found with the second law of thermodynamics, um, second law of information dynamics. Information dynamics, yeah, yeah. I think I think this is a, 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 a it's not the evidence. I can't. It, everybody gets excited about this aspect of uh, we live in a simulation and all that, but actually. This is just a conclusion, a tiny conclusion, a possible conclusion. It's not even, I'm not claiming I found the, the total proof. Mm. All I'm saying is some kind of supporting evidence to this, and it needs obviously more research. But um, um, I am excited about the second law of information dynamics itself, because we have an additional tool now in physics to look at uh, a variety of phenomena, including biological systems and, uh, you know, DNA, RNA, other things. Uh, but um, um, this appears to to give some support to this idea. Some kind of it's, it's like a fingerprint, if you want, mm. like some kind of supporting evidence of uh, of a signature of this um, code, uh, because it appears to permeate everything. It's um, it's quite universal and um, it's, it's it's really applicable even to mathematical entities like uh, geometric shapes and symmetries and this kind of stuff. That's a short clip from episode 32 with Professor Melvin Bobson. For the full episode, click right about down here. And for the subscribe button, that should be over here. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed so far. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a fantastic Christmas, a happy new year, and I shall see you all in January. Thank you.